Hey everyone, this is Carissa. Thanks for stopping by today. In this month's newsletter, I wanted to take a closer look at the Chibitronics Chibi Lights. I have the starter set here and I'm going to show you that in action in just a bit. But I wanted to show you that some of these things are available a la carte as well, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, the copper tape is available in kind of this own its own replacement role, and also the LED lights are available in separate packs as well. They come in packs of 30, and each one of these little triangles that you're seeing here has three little separate LED lights. Now, these are the colored lights here, um, and I will be using those in today's project, and there are two different sets of colored lights. There's a red, yellow, and blue, and then there's also a pink, orange, and green. So I'll be using both of those colored lights. You'll be seeing those in action. And here I am just opening up the starter kit so you can kind of see what is in it. I wanted to be able to walk you through a couple of the basic circuits before we went through the actual card making process. So you can see this little starter kit comes with a book that walks you through all different types of circuits and kind of gives you helpful tips and tricks along the way. It also comes with the copper tape, a couple of batteries, some lights, and a couple of binder clips. So the first thing we're going to build is this basic circuit. Now, I know the word circuit sounds super scary, right? I mean, it sounds so scientific and technical and everything. And I I will admit, I was a little bit intimidated by this in the beginning, but let me tell you, this is much easier than you think. So I'm starting out by building this basic circuit. What you want to remember is that positive always goes with positive and negative always goes with negative. So when we're talking about the battery, when we're talking about these little lines of copper tape, and when we're talking about the lights themselves, positive will always go with positive and negative will always go with negative. Now, what you want to also keep in mind is that you never want your wires to cross. Now, your copper tape are going to be your wires. If you get your wires crossed, then you get a short circuit, so that won't work. And you also want to remember that you want to keep these kind of in one continuous line. So you saw me lay down the first piece of copper tape. I was kind of folding it back on itself to follow the shape that is on this little kind of tutorial book here. And now I am running the positive line. So I like to refer to these circuits as loops. So your loop is either closed or it's open. And I think thinking about it as a loop kind of makes it feel a little less intimidating. So we're going to look at this battery here. It's a positive side and there's a negative side and they're both marked. So when we place this battery into our circuit or our loop, we're gonna make sure positive goes to positive and negative goes to negative. Now, just like with the battery, there's a positive side and a negative side. On these little lights, there's also a positive side and a negative side. The negative side is the skinnier pointy side, and the positive side is the fatter, like broader side. So what you want to make sure is that your positive is going to your positive wire and your negative is going to your negative wire. Now, one helpful hint I will give you is that you want to make sure you burnish all of these things down because you're going to see me here. I put in my battery and I press it down and it wasn't working. So I'm just taking my Teflon bone folder here and I'm burnishing that little LED light onto those quote unquote wires that I created with my copper tape. And once I do that, the connection is nice and sealed and then my light works when I connect the battery. So that little flap is the way of connecting the battery or closing the loop or the circuit and turning the light on. So super simple, right? Now, like I mentioned before, this book I found to be very helpful because it kind of gave me a place to play and learn before I went and applied it to my card project. So that was a simple circuit that we built before. It only had one light. Now we're going to build a parallel circuit, and this is going to be the same type of circuit or loop that's going to be on our card today. So I wanted to walk you through this. I'm starting by laying down my negative wire, my copper tape along that negative line. And remember, positive always with positive, negative always with negative, and never cross your wires because that will cause a short circuit. So now that I've got this negative wire down on the paper, kind of I followed that guide, that was super easy. I'm going to go ahead and 
lay down my positive line or my positive wire. And I'm just, like I said, following the lines that are there on the paper, but this gave me a great place to practice kind of making these and get the concept of building these circuits or these loops on a piece of paper. So I'm laying down my positive line here. I'm going to burnish all of that down. And then along those, I am going to lay my lights. Now before my, my light touched the positive wire and the negative wire, it's still gonna touch the positive wire and the negative wire, but the wires run alongside each other or parallel to each other in this instance. And this allows me to put more than one light onto this loop or this circuit. So I'm putting the positive side to the positive side, the negative side to the negative side, and then I'm going to burnish them down. So I have placed three lights along this circuit here. You can see all of those kind of lining up. You wanna keep those lines close enough together that you can put the lights, you know, so that they can straddle and come in good contact with your wires there. And now when I place my battery in here, positive to positive and negative to negative, I have three lights that light up instead of one. Now, I have to tell you, my inner science nerd was going crazy when I got this kind of figured out. And it really wasn't that hard to figure out. And I was super intimidated when I first started. But as I started playing in this book and really getting a feel for it, I was like jumping for joy. <laughs> So now we're going to take the tree farm stamp set and we're going to make a card out of this. Now, when I saw this little trailer, I knew that I had to make those little lights light up with these chibi lights. And so what I'm going to do is start by stamping my images onto a card front. Now, I'm going to actually stamp more than one copy of this, and I'll show you what I'm going to use that for in just a bit. But for now, I'm just kind of getting my bearings here. I kind of planned out where I want all of my stamped images. I'm going to ink it up in some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and stamp it onto this Nina Solar White cardstock. Now, I'm using my Mini Misty because I'm going to stamp more than one of these, and I want them all to be in the same place. And you saw me pull my sleeve down over the heel of my hand so that I could rub my hand along those images, I just find that's a good way to get a good amount of pressure all over those stamps. And it allows my hands to slide across the surface of the Mini Misty. So that's just something I like to do. <laughs> if you're not wearing long sleeves, you're up a creek without a paddle, right? <laughs> So I've gone ahead and stamped those onto a piece of Inka Dinka Do stamp masking paper as well. And I've fussy cut those out. And then I decided I wanted this panel to have a little bit of stitching around the edge. So I used a Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle die to cut that out. And since the paper was smaller, I had to rearrange my stamps so that they would fit, you know, into the proper placement on this smaller panel. Because I didn't want ink to transfer from those stamps to my card front, I'm just using a little piece of clear acetate here to lay over the card front that I've already stamped, positioning my stamps on top of that clear acetate so that no ink gets on my already stamped piece. And then I'm going to remove that piece of acetate so that I can stamp another version or another copy of this card front onto a stitched rectangle panel. Now it's time to add the second tree. So I'm going to go ahead and mask off both my trailer and the tree that I've already stamped onto the card front. And I'm just using those little fussy cut masks that I created. This doesn't have to be super perfect. Once I get those masked off, I'm going to put my larger tree in there. I'm going to ink it up again with that VersaFine Onyx Black pigment ink, and then I'm going to stamp it onto my card. And then I have those areas masked off so that it won't stamp over the top of the tree that's already there and the trailer. So this is going to look like it's in the background rather than the foreground. So I have my stamped panel here, and now I'm just planning out where I want my lights to be. So I'm taking a little paper piercer here, and I am just creating holes in the light bulbs where I want my chibi lights to be, my little LED lights. And I'm making sure that I make them nice and big so those lights show through really well. And then once I get that planned out, I'm going to go ahead and color my images. And I am using the Ink Tints pencils today to do my coloring. I am using the very literally bittiest bit <laughs> of water to spread the color around. So I'm just adding the color onto the image here with the little Ink Tints pencil. Then I'm picking up just the tiniest bit of water and using that to 
blend my ink out. So you don't want to put too much water on this because it's not a watercolor paper. You could use a watercolor cardstock for this. This There's no reason you couldn't, but I didn't. So <laughs> I just had to be careful with the amount of water that I put. And I did get a little bit of warping, so maybe I should have used the watercolor cardstock, but that's okay. So here is my second piece stamped image here. And this I stamped out so that I could get perfect placement of my LED lights on my trailer. And what I'm doing on this piece is I'm taking a pencil and I'm planning out my circuit. Just like I had a little cheat sheet on the circuit book before, I'm kind of planning out my circuit ahead of time so that I know where I need to lay my wires or my copper tape, where I need to put my battery, and where I will put my lights. So I'm just marking the light bulbs that I want to light up, the ones that I created holes in earlier. I'm marking where my battery will be. It will be on that door so that when you press on the door that the lights will light up. And then here's where I'm glad I planned out my circuit because at first I thought that top line was going to be my negative circuit. And then when I went to go draw in my positive side of the circuit, I realized that those wires were going to cross. So I had to switch them up. I just erased that and made it go out a little bit wider so that I could come to that positive side of the battery. And then I made the bottom one my negative wire here. So you can see I've marked them with a pencil. I've marked a positive and a negative. And I'm going to use that as my guide for laying down my copper tape. Now I need a place for my battery to sit. So I'm just taking a little scrap of Nina Solar White cardstock and I'm folding it in half. It's going to kind of enclose my battery. And I'm going to mark one side with positive and one side with negative. My negative is going to be down on the paper and my positive is going to be the side that's kind of up here. And I'm just doing that based on the kind of sketch that I created. So I'm going to attach that battery holder right onto my card front over the door where I want that battery to be. And then I'm going to start laying down my wires. So here I'm just taking my copper tape and I'm following the guide that I created. So I'm going to start just past that last light that I want. I'm going to follow that line around and then I'm gonna bring it down underneath the battery holder and loop it over the top of the battery holder to come inside of the battery holder where that positive sign is. And that is my positive wire of my circuit here. So I'm just burnishing all of this down to make sure that I have good connections when I go to complete my circuit. And now I'm going to lay down the negative wire. Now you wanna make sure that these are close enough together that the lights can touch both sides of this circuit or these wires, both of these wires that we're creating. But you wanna make sure that they don't cross or touch each other either because that will give you a short circuit. So you get your wires crossed, you get a short circuit, nothing works. Now, isn't it cool that we're learning where all of these like kind of sayings came from? You know, you don't wanna get your wires crossed. I don't know that I even understood that before I started playing with these chibi lights, but maybe you did. <laughs> I just haven't um, done the whole electrical thing too much. Um, you give me biology, I'm fantastic. But electricity is a totally different thing. And I'm trying to hopefully break this down for you so that you can see that this is actually super easy. So now I'm going to apply my lights along this area here. And I'm just making sure that I get the LED light lined up exactly where the stamped image light bulb is so that when I put my card panel on top, I will have the light show right through. Now you can see when I put my battery in here and I close off the loop or I complete the circuit with the battery, I did have a couple of lights that weren't lighting up. Now I didn't do anything wrong other than I hadn't made sure that my lights were really burnished down onto that copper tape. So I've put the lights on there, I've burnished them down, I've made sure positive is with positive and negative is with negative. And now when I complete my circuit by pressing down on that battery, all of my lights light up. Isn't that cool? I just, I mean, seriously guys, I love this. <laughs> So now in order to make sure that that circuit is not always closed, to make sure that the loop is not always closed and that the battery does not run out, I'm going to use three layers of foam tape to keep that battery holder from always pressing down. If you use two layers, 
it will always be pressed down onto the battery and your battery will run out. So I'm using three layers of foam tape here. I've just laid them onto my nonstick craft sheet to stack them up. And then I'm gonna cut them down into the size pieces I need. And I'm going to create a wall of foam tape around the battery to keep that battery inside the battery holder. And that way, when you press on the door, of the trailer it's going to light up so you can see i'm just building a wall of foam tape right around that battery holder that i created out of that nina solar white cardstock and then i'm going to use a triple thick layer of foam adhesive all over the front of this card base that i've created to attach my card front that's all colored there and ready to go so i'm just putting a three layer of foam adhesive all over the front of this and i'm going to attach my card front using that. Now, Julie created a video tutorial a couple weeks back showing you how to use these chibi lights in a simple circuit. That was the first circuit that I showed you in that little tutorial book that comes in the starter kit. This is a parallel circuit, so it's a little bit different, but I'll make sure that I link to Julie's video as well. So you can see I've removed all of my backer to my foam adhesive. I've gone ahead and put my card front onto that card base where I built my circuit. Now you could definitely build your circuit onto your card base itself, but I just think it's a little bit easier to have that piece underneath that you're building it on, especially since I could make sure that all of the stamps were lined up and I had my lights exactly where I wanted them. And I've stacked up this card. I've added a little bit of pattern paper. And now I'm just adding some finishing touches. I added a little bit of stardust stickles on the trees for a little bit of snow. I added some glossy accents to the lights that weren't lighting up. And then I also added some three millimeter pretty pink posh sequins to the lights that are lighting up. I just kind of nestled them into that hole that I created. And that really like kind of magnifies the lights once those lights light up on that trailer. So there you have it, a closer look at the Chibitronics Chibi lights, these LED lights that you can add to any project to make it light up the night. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this closer look. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comment section below and I will do my best to get answers to you. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.